This video is sponsored by you and your generous support on Patreon. Patreon is the thing that keeps my work on this channel sustainable and allows me to try weirder, riskier stuff going forward. Plus you get access to cool exclusive content as well, so if you like my videos and want to directly help the channel continue so I can keep making more, head to patreon.com slash writing on games and pledge only what you're comfortable with. Thank you so much for your support and now on with the show. Hitman 3 just can't catch a break, can it? Here you have a truly incredible title, the capping off point to one of the greatest trilogies in games period, and not only does it get sent out to an utterly catastrophic launch, with confusing pricing structures and broken progress carryover, and an always online system that has yet to prove its worth to any degree six years in, IO took the year they had to examine these issues before the Epic Store exclusivity wore off, and when the time came to release the Steam version, they just did it all again. Those who held off waiting for a less confusing release model were certainly not relieved of that confusion, and people like me were left extra frustrated that a game this good wasn't getting the shake it deserved. Topped off with that kick to the teeth that the much-touted VR mode, now released of its formerly PlayStation exclusive reigns, was similarly a complete mess, a total wasted opportunity, I think, apparently. It's just a straight port of the PSVR version. There's no room scale. I just tried to strangle this dude and he cat catapulted into the stratosphere. Wait, wait a minute, that last one sounds like it actually kind of rules. Look, for as genuinely frustrating as Hitman 3's launches have been, the larger negative sentiment has done little to dull my curiosity for this new PC VR mode specifically. Even as something of a cheerleader for VR as a platform, a true believer in its ability to alter our view of fundamental game design principles, you know, seeing all the screenshots and videos flooding the internet as people donned their headsets to take part in POV wrench-throwing mayhem, only to be greeted instead by a cavalcade of ridiculous physics bugs and other such issues, only got me more eager to dust off my own Oculus Quest and partake in the chaos myself. I knew there was a lot wrong with this thing from the offset. Some of its numerous stumbling blocks are apparent without even putting on the headset, but after spending several hours navigating around those issues, it became clear that there is something buried deep within the rubble of very real problems that I kind of felt the need to uncover before I could pass judgement on this thing in full. But in order to get to that glimmer of promise at the mode's core, turns out there's a lot of rubble that needs moving. Because don't get me wrong here, this thing is totally busted in so many ways. To start at a very broad level, I guess what a lot of complaints I was seeing, outside of basic performance stuff, which is bad enough on its own, centred around a kind of wasted potential here. And sure, if your vision of a Hitman VR mode was to be opening your attaché at the top of the clock tower and physically piecing together your sniper rifle before lining up and taking the shot, there's a whole host of reasons why that just isn't going to happen. Disappointingly, even with the added support of dual VR controllers, as opposed to the PlayStation dual shock or dual sense only setup, this is still very much a button based framework here. Accessing inventory, reloading a gun, hiding bodies, crouching, blending in, these aren't things you physically do here. They're mechanical states that you activate by pressing A or B, and even then they aren't particularly reliable, certainly not intuitive. For example, your instinct might tell you that holding a wrench is enough to unleash a world of pain on your enemies. You've already gone through the hassle of collecting the wrench, which requires you to grab grab the item then look down at your chest, wrist, I can't really tell, and hope that the inventory orb pops up which seems to only rarely happen when you're crouching down, and then accessing the inventory when you need the item later, which is a separate button, then scrolling through like normal, then holding onto the grab button lest you immediately drop your item upon leaving the menu. All sorted, right? Hammer time! Well no, because swinging away like a madman will only lead to a frenzy all of its own, as your foe defiantly rises time and time again, as if you hadn't just enacted severe blunt force trauma to the dude's cranium. This is because you made the crucial mistake of not also readying your weapon by holding the right trigger down. And this is just to knock an enemy over at close range. This isn't even to get into the menagerie of button combos and specific timings of pressing and releasing needed to do something as otherwise simple, as iconic as chucking something at an enemy's head. A process that only worked about half the time I did it and had me wondering if this was an issue with me or the controllers or the game because I I was fairly sure I was doing everything the game asked me to. Not only does all of this fail to play to the tactility inherent to VR as a medium, but the sheer density of stuff you can actually pull off in baseline Hitman doesn't lend itself well to the odd layout of the Oculus Touch controllers, meaning I was fumbling at every turn trying to remember which button was actually which, something that's pretty difficult to do when you can't actually see the controllers in question, and completely antithetical.
identical to the best, most intuitive VR titles that make the experience as seamless as possible, like you aren't holding controllers at all. As impressive a feat as it is to meaningfully transpose any game to VR, it's clear that Hitman is not a title purpose-built for the medium. It feels like a weird sideload mod or something. All of that isn't to say, however, that this is simply a case of placing the camera in front of players' eyes, as there are multiple slight alterations that have had to be made to the core game in order to fit the new format. I guess on the more overtly negative side of things, you have the incredibly obvious graphical downgrade, as these sprawling environments suddenly need to be rendered at such massive scale. And sure, it is as wondrous as it is in any VR game to get to witness these environments you've previously spent dozens of hours exploring from entirely new perspectives, and noticing details you may have never spotted before. But combined with the awkward controls, it's hard not to feel like it's all a bit distant, muted, very much a look but don't touch affair. These environments are as huge as you'd expect, but a great deal of that glorious opulence that made them as distinctive as they are, the sheen of a map like Dubai for instance, is understandably but disappointingly blurred away somewhat. In terms of more mechanical alterations, it seems as if AI has been made to be slightly more accommodating from this perspective. The game I guess understanding the inevitable flailing that will occur as players try to figure out how everything works here. There appears to be some degree of auto-aim with the game's firearms to make up for the lack of 47's otherwise ruthlessly steady hand, and allowing you some more leeway to at least gun your way out of a bind. Merely bumping into someone a few times in the main game would be enough to arouse suspicion and summon guards to your location, whereas here you can treat these weirdos as near enough punching bags. You're able to get these people ragdolling like nobody's business, and the suspicion you'll garner will be a fraction of what you'd expect, as you reach out and graze them face-off style, or like you've just dunted a whole host of hallucinogens and are now seeing this world for the simulation that it really is, man. And the overall result is a truly odd sensation, seeing that familiar splendour of VR make itself apparent as you gaze upon these still very detailed environments, but contrary to what the impressive scale of a map like Sapienza would have you believe initially, you're just getting right up close to these worlds that are about as far from living and breathing as you can possibly imagine. These may be quote unquote normal places you can wander around, filled with quote unquote normal people, that is to say civilians, but in reality it feels anything but normal. It feels like you've entered an often stunningly crafted Lego world. Impressive in stature and scope, sure, but lean on it the wrong way and the whole thing comes tumbling down around you. And here we get to the crux, you know, I struggle to think of a scenario that's more Hitman than that. Look, I know Hitman VR has problems, I understand it's not a good VR game so to speak, but it is about the most Hitman version of a VR game I could possibly envision, and that's why I can't help but still kind of love it. As much as some commenters have gotten weirdly mad at me in prior videos for apparently not playing these games right, because despite getting suit only Silent Assassin on a whole bunch of these maps, I tend to instead feature footage of me throwing people off of rooftops dressed as a clown or endlessly punching a terrified, drugged out Berlin crowd, like it or not, Hitman is a very funny game. It understands and plays into the absurdity of dressing 47 up as a tattoo artist or giving a weirdly euphemistic house tour or busting out a sick drum solo before electrocuting your target or whatever. And at the core of the game's comedy is the idea of getting this weird, emotionless alien into the craziest, wackiest situations in these worlds full of their own weird aliens that do not think or act as normal human beings would do, and desperately flailing your way out of those situations. Now Hitman VR might not allow for the other, itself very enjoyable side of that coin. The previously mentioned suit-only silent assassin approach, the ability to learn these systems inside and out, and interrupt clockwork AI patterns to become the master assassin 47 really is. You know, the game's VR framework simply isn't reliable enough for that. Plus, the severe downgrade in draw distance means you probably wouldn't be able to pull off those sick cross-map headshots even if you could momentarily wrangle the controllers into doing what you say. But for all that Hitman drops the ball in the kind of tactility you'd expect from a VR title, that desperate flailing is the thing that is suddenly placed directly in your hands. It is pure physical slapstick. Baseline Hitman is a game about improvisation, often panicked in nature. In Hitman VR, there is no choice but to improvise as everything turns to pure farce and pratfall, with your best laid plans crumbling in front of you. And sure, it might be the result of a poor control scheme, but when it results in situations like me trying to time the perfect wrench throw, pulling my hand back ready to really nail this poor sucker, only for my effort to be
be repaid with a pitiful toss to the ground, causing both the guard and bewildered party guests to turn and look directly at me, there is a degree of comic timing here that is hard for me not to appreciate. And even then, you know, the normal Hitman mechanical framework isn't exactly intuitive itself. It's still unbelievably dense and requires a lot of poking and prodding at different things, messing up until you can get an idea of how it all works and how you might use that knowledge to your advantage in the future. Similarly here, I found myself unable to rely on even the simplest strategies. I had to completely rethink my approach to targets that I've run through in some cases for over five years now. I have to think about crouching because I can't simply snap to a wall and guarantee that I won't be seen over a ledge anymore. That may sound like a really small thing, but it required me to get truly creative in Hitman in a way that I haven't in quite some time. See, for its vast array of problems, I found Hitman VR to be kind of rejuvenating. Not in the physical sense, mind, the eye strain and motion sickness were a keen reminder of how out of practice I am with VR generally, but you know, look, I've been through these maps so, so many different times. I have exhausted every corner and mechanical possibility there is to see on these levels, and it is absolutely a testament to the game's complex web of systems intermingling among these spectacular environments that I can always load up Hitman and seemingly create a new story every time. But I know the nuts and bolts of this thing pretty much inside and out. Then Hitman VR comes along and suddenly I'm a complete fish out of water once more. The game flat out doesn't work in the same way I spent hundreds of hours learning previously. Now that doesn't mean this is a mode I'd ever recommend over the base game, not in a million years. But come on, no one's going to play it like that. This doesn't excuse the really blatantly shoddy design of many elements here, and it doesn't make the lack of a true room scale VR Hitman experience sting any less. But it's a novelty and a pretty fun one at that. And in amongst the copious jank and the slight mechanical changes made in order to accommodate even a move to VR this non-committal, there is still an eye towards the comic absurdity and disarray that forms a large part of what I so love about Hitman. Even though I won't be returning to this mess particularly frequently past the publishing of this video, for all the negative labels you could throw at this mode, I do think it counts for something that the last thing you could call Hitman VR would be inauthentic. Thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, turn on notifications, all that YouTube stuff, and check out my podcast and Twitch links in the description. Most of all though, I have to thank my patrons for their unbelievably generous support. If you check out the community tab or Patreon feeds, you can see some of my ideas for videos going forward. Riskier ones that I simply would not have been able to consider were it not for the safety net your support gives me. Thank you all so much. If you've enjoyed any of the videos I've put out and want to join the many amazing people on screen helping the channel become more sustainable by supporting my my work, you can directly help out as well as get things like access to completely ad-free video uploads, Q&As, and now exclusive video content by heading to patreon.com slash writing on games and pledging only what you feel comfortable with. I am forever thankful for your support in whatever form it takes. Special thanks go to Mark B. Writing, Artyom Vitsyuk, Dan Murray, Gavin Casey, Alistair Dunn, Betoutis Catarsis, Matthew Bowman, Ben Pace, Young Condor, David Carstens, Alex Monasterio, Mike G, Scared Confusion, Tom Webster, Max Cohen, Dana Sikowskis, Christopher Farris, Nicholas Villeneuve, Matthew Grover, Nelwyn Palacios, Ruth Natman, Charles J. Liu, Yogesh Despande, Leah Chinello, Captain Knusprich, Timothy Jones, Bryce Snyder, Lucas, David Bjork, Winter, The Nameless Guy, Tommy Carver Chaplin, Dr. Motorcycle, Shardfire, Lynn Browning, Calliope Rannis, Spike Jones, Ocean Alousen, Charlie Kimball, Jordan Midler, and Charlie Yang. And with that, this has been another episode of Writing on Games. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you all next time.